you very much for the opportunity to present. My name is Nicoletta Glenati and today I'm going to be talking to you about game theory and the actual library. Uh, a few things about myself. I am a postdoc researcher at the Max Planck Institute uh, for Evolutionary Biology and I am part of the group Dynamics of Social Behavior. Uh, myself and my group are interested in studying human interactions. Uh, we translate them into games and then we try to understand why people behave the way that they do and more specifically why people cooperate, why people are nice to each other. My research heavily relies on software. I am a research software developer and the main programming language that I use is Python. I have attended several conferences and volunteered at several uh, Python conferences. One of my biggest contribution is co-organizing Django Girls UK for three years in a row and the workshop was part of PyCon UK. But like I said, my research interest is in game theory and this is where the Axelrod project comes in. It's a tool that allows us to simulate one specific game, which is called the Prisoner's Dilemma, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the game in a second. I've been using the project for five years now. I had my first contribution of five years ago, and last year I became a core developer. So what is the Prisoner's Dilemma? Well, the Prisoner's Dilemma is a game that describes a situation we're all very familiar with, and that is the situation of meeting someone in the street and deciding whether we're going to be nice to them or not. Uh, this is a mathematical representation and let me walk you through it. Uh, there are two players, there is the row player and the column player. I am the row player, you are the column player. And we both have two decisions, two actions. And that is to either be nice to each other or to not be nice to each other. To cooperate or to defect and you yourself have the same uh, list of actions to cooperate and to defect. Now every time our actions meet there is an outcome. So for example when we both cooperate we receive a positive number of three. Now over here where we are cooperating, you can see that I have a reason to change my decision and to defect because I can get a 5 instead of a 3 and 5 is a greater number. So I'm going to go ahead and defect, but that is true also for yourself. If we are here and you're getting a 3, then you're going to change and you're going to defect and get a 5 and we're going to end up at the point where we both defect and we get a positive number of 1. Now 1 is way smaller than 3 and this is where we started from. And that's exactly, and this is exactly why this game uh, describes a situation of a dilemma. We both choose what we think is the best for ourselves, but we end up in a not sufficient outcome. So what the prisoner's dilemma tells us is that if you display once, then you should defect. That is the right decision. But what we see in the world around us is we don't see people going around punching each other in the face. We see people being nice to each other. So where does this behavior comes from. Uh, there are several ways that we can explain this behavior. One of them is repetition. What happens if we play the prisoner's dilemma more than once? What happens if we play the prisoner's dilemma tomorrow and then again tomorrow? Then now maybe I have a reason to be nice to you, hoping that you'll be nice to me tomorrow. And because of repetition we can come to a point where both of us are cooperating. This is called the iterated prisoner's dilemma and is actually very heavily studied in research and is the centerpiece when we talk about human uh, cooperation. And this is exactly the type of situations that the Axelrod project allows us to simulate. So I'm going to go ahead and go here. And this is just a, a Jupyter notebook, a beautiful interface that will allow me to run some code. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import the packet. And what I want to do is create a match. A match where two players are going to play a match of integrated prisoner dilemma, of the integrated prisoner's dilemma. Um, there's going to be one player that's very simple, just going to cooperate in every turn and another player that very simply is going to defect at every turn. And how many turns we want? We just want five for now. I'm going to go ahead and play the match and what we can see is that yes, we're getting C's which stand for cooperation from the cooperator and D's which stands for, for defection for defector. We can get the scores at each turn, zero and five, and we can also get the final score that each strategy achieved which is 0 and 25. Uh, these are very simple strategies, behaviors. Uh, they're more complex ones. Uh, one, very pop one very famous one is tit for tat, where tit for tat starts by cooperating and then just copies the previous movement move made by the, by the opponent. So what we see now is both players are going to cooperate forever and that gives them a final score of 15. This is a match where two players play against each other, but we can also create uh, what's called a tournament where a list of players play all against each other and then we get the winner. So I'm going to go ahead and going to type some strategies that just popped into my head right now just to show you that there are several behaviors implemented within the package. There are actually more than 200 
behaviors, strategies implemented within the package. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create a tournament with my players. Each match is going to last for 200 turns and we're going to repeat the entire tournament five times. I'm going to go and get ahead and get my results. Nice. And now what I can see is who is the winner of the tournament? Well, the winner of the tournament is the strategy called Grudger. Uh, we can even visualize the results. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop some code here and we can see we can get a visualization. Uh, Grudger is first followed by tit for tat the last one is alternator. Uh, what you're seeing here is we're not seeing any variation and that is because in the five times that we repeated the tournament nothing changed because these strategies always behave in the same way. Uh, but we can actually include a more random stochastic strategy. So random just cooperates and defects randomly. And what we're going to see is what this creates is some kind of variation in the results. So now the average score for Grudger is 3.5, but sometimes Grudger gets 3.6, etc., etc. in the five repetitions. These are only two of the capabilities of the project. Actually, what I went through today can be found on the online documentation of the project under tutorials. I just went through creating matches, running a simple tournament, and you, you can see that there are several ways that we can do. Another thing that might be of interest is contributing. There you can find guidelines, how to run tests, and there's a whole section on contributing a strategy. And actually, I think uh, when contributing to this project, this is the funniest, the, the funniest way that you can do it. Um, but the actual structure of the library looks like, uh, it's a bit like this. Uh, very simplified, of course, is very modularized, and I think there are two advantages to being so modularized. Number one, everything is being tested. Um, we actually have a 100% coverage of our tests, and everything is easier to be documented. So there is documentation within each part of the code, doc strings within classes and functions, and there's also uh, an online documentation uh, that I just uh, showed you, and that you can find a lot of information. Uh, why is it great to have tests and documentation? Well, it's great for several reasons, and one of them is that it really makes it easier for people to contribute to your project. Uh, we have a long list of contributors. We actually have 69 different contributors to the project, some of them being researchers like myself, but others being students, high school students, uh, people from industry, and other people really don't know what they did, uh, but they were actually uh, first-time contributors to open source. Uh, I think the main reason why we have had, have had so many contributions is because uh, the, we have a very friendly environment and I'm not claiming I had anything to do with it. Uh, actually, I think uh, Vince Knight, Meatballs and Mark Harper, uh, the first core developers, have everything to do with this. Created a really friendly environment and this is actually one of the comments from one of our contributors back in 2017 and she said, I really wanted to thank you all. I discovered your project because of a course where we needed to participate in an open source project. And I had the occasion to compare the welcome me and my coworkers received here compared to other people from my class who work on different projects. I've got to say that you are awesome on that part and on the help you provide to newbies. I like your project, so, project, so I'll try to contribute, uh, to continue to contribute now and then. And I think uh, this is the best comment someone involved in the open source community can receive. Um, so this here you can find all the links uh, associated with the project. So if you want to print screen something, this is the time. The project is on GitHub. There's documentation online that you can find information on how to contribute, etc., etc. And this is the list of the developers. Um, for anyone who's new to open source out there and is looking to find a project to contribute, uh, I know it's it's hard. It can be scary. Uh, this is a screenshot from my first contribution to the project. And as you can see, I had to open and close two pull requests because before opening, you know, a good one because I was breaking things. I wasn't breaking the test, but I was breaking other things. Uh, but the core develop the core team back then were really patient with me and really helped me. So. Speaking for the team of the actual project and for myself, uh, anyone who's new and wants to try open source, uh, we will be more than happy and I would be more than happy to help you with your first steps. And yes, thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you. Mm -hmm.